Praise the Lord, everyone, as we welcome you once again to the Reaching Out program. This program is telecast from the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road in the suburbs of Finneytown in the city of Cincinnati, Ohio. I am the program's host, Elder Rudy Roussel. My pastor is the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers, who is also the Diocesan Bishop in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World in the state of Ohio. We welcome you as we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. John said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. We encourage you today to grab your Bibles as we prepare to go before you, uh, the, uh, before we go to, as we prepare to go before the Lord uh, with a word of prayer. We would encourage you uh, to get your Bibles together uh, as, as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for your grace, mercy, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us this opportunity to humbly come before your divine presence. Lord, you have been good, you've been kind, you've helped us, you've strengthened us on every hand. We pray, Lord, that you have your way in this telecast today. Let something be done or said, in word or in deed, that would encourage the viewers to seek the light of your salvation, that it would strengthen those, bind up broken hearts, set those who are captives free. Lord, for those who are downtrodden and saddened, that it would give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, we thank you even now for what you're about to do as we attempt to glorify you. We pray, Lord, that we let all flesh remain silent, Lord. We ask you to unctionize your servant this day. We give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, we would like to just welcome you to this evening's telecast of the Reaching Out program. Again, I am Elder Rudy Roussel, and we are telling this telecast is being broadcast from the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple. So if you've had enough time this morning, this afternoon, to, to get your Bibles, uh, I would like for you to turn with me to the book of Psalms, and we will turn uh, to Psalms 19, 119. There are several passages, uh, particular passages of Scripture uh, this evening that I would like to share with you from the word of the Lord. We, uh, the scripture reading this evening is from Psalms uh, 119. We will start at verses 49 and conclude at verse 56. Let us read. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have made me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statues, thy statues have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. And today, for this afternoon, for just a little while, I would like for you to just focus your uh, attention upon verse number 52. And the thought is, comfort, O Lord, comfort me, O Lord. And I will read verse 52 again, just for your hearing. It says, I remember thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. The psalmist, this is a very, very familiar passage of scripture. And he, the psalmist is talking about being comforted by the word of God. A lot of times we go through things, we go through situations, you know, in life where we, 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 we realize that comfort is the one thing that has uh, uh, pretty much eluded mankind since the dawn of time, since the creation. We have always been looking for comfort, a place of peace, a place of rest, a place of comfort in life. And there are from time to time per season that the Lord allows us as his people, those that are called by his name, those that have taken upon the name of Christ to enjoy seasons of peace and seasons of comfort. But then there are times when we are bombarded and we are afflicted 
by certain situations, whether it be financial issues, especially in times like this where uh, our economy is, is, is uh, financially is being overhauled. You know, things are tough and things are tough all over. Families are, are, are doing everything they can to try and pool their resources and, and do things to financially uh, make some adjustments in their budgets because of the effect of, of, the, of the dollar in, in currency and the, you know its uh, place in the world money market. And everybody is feeling the pinch of the financial and economic situation we're in. But sometimes, you know, spiritually, on a spiritual note, we're in a place in God where we are being bombarded, or the adversary, or the devil, or Lucifer, Beelzebub, the lion wonder who seeks to destroy the soul of mankind, comes and he tries to wreak havoc in the lives of God and the lives of God's people. You know, sometimes it might be in sickness, it might be in finance, it might be where the Lord uh, uh, has allowed him. Uh, certainly, God does not suffer any man to be tempted. But the adversary tries to, to, to bombard us, to take our mind and our affection, try to divert, uh, make us detour uh, from. The, the proven path of righteousness tried to cause confusion in our lives. And of course, we understand and we do realize that God is not the author of confusion. And sometimes we have to, you know, when we're in situations like this, you know, no matter how painful these things might be, we can always call upon the name of the Lord in our trouble, in our distress, to find some sort of comfort, to find some peace, to find some rest from the wiles of the adversary. For certainly Satan comes to kill and to steal and to destroy the people of God. His idea is to, is to, is to do things that would cause us to lose our soul, to turn our affection away from the God of our salvation. But here the psalmist is saying, he says, remember the, wor the word unto thy servant, of which Thou has caused me to hope. So there's always hope in the word of God. We can always trust in God because there's hope in God. Jesus Christ, he's the hope of glory. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. God himself has, has allowed certain things to come upon us, not to plan our demise, not to cause spiritual hurt, but to strengthen us, to take us to the next level, to allow us to endure something so it would promote some spiritual growth so that we can be further used in a higher level in the, in the, in the kingdom of God. The psalmist said, this is my comfort in my affliction that thy word has quickened me. And a lot of times we are going through things in life and situations arise in our homes and in our families and it takes the word of God to quicken us. Uh, saints of God read the Bible, we study the Bible, we worship the Lord and the only way you can get to know God is through his word because his word is his will. If you want to find out the will, your, the, God's will for you, you have to study his word. The Bible says thy word O oh Lord, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The statutes, the commandments and ordinances of God, they are listed in the, in, in, in the Bible, and we should study the Bible. All of God's people should continue to further their relationship with God by studying the word of God because it provides the comfort that we need in times of struggle, in times of distress, in times of sadness and sickness, in the times of death. We can always go to the word of the Lord because there's healing in the word, there's deliverance in the word, there's salvation in the word of God. He said, this is my comfort in my affliction. So whatever we're going for, we're through, whatever life has dealt us, whatever we're, things we're being bombarded or afflicted with, the psalmist is saying to us this evening that this is my comfort for thy word has quickened me. And sometimes when you 
We always say, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. I'm, 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 I understand what's going on in my life, and God has put me in this situation or allowed me to be in this situation, and I'm not going to do anything until I hear a word from God. A lot of times, God is waiting to hear a word from you. Lord, I need you. Right now, Lord, I need you in my life to help me to overcome these obstacles that the devil, the adversary, that Satan himself has placed in my path to, to create obstacles that might hinder me from worshiping and serving you, Lord, in the beauty of holiness. And the psalmist said, the proud have, have had me greatly in derision, yet I have not declined from thy law. In spite of the things that we go through, in spite of the things that the adversary has heaped upon us, we know that there is safety in the word of God. We know that if we trust in God and in his word, that deliverance is nigh. Sometimes God does not permit us to get out of the problem. He allows us to go through the situation because in the problem we find him. And then sometimes in our tribulations and the things that we do in our tribulations, sometimes God grants us the revelation. He will show you things in your tribulation that if you had not been going through certain things in life spiritually, ordinarily you might not be able to, these things may not have been revealed to you. A lot of time God will come to you. He will minister to you in the midnight hours. He will help you to overcome obstacles. He will provide that peace, that comfort that you need. He said, I remember thy judgments of old, Lord, and I, I have comforted myself. The Bible says that David said that he comforted himself. That all of the things that David had endured and he had gone through looking to see some, 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 some comfort from somewhere. David said he had to comfort himself and the psalmist is saying, he said, oh Lord I have, uh, oh Lord have comforted, I have comforted myself. He said, I have remembered thy judgments of old, oh Lord and have comforted myself. He said, I have remembered. If God may not be moving in your life right now and he doesn't seem like he's anywhere near while you're going through situations, all you have to do is think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he had done for you. The Bible says, he said, my soul cries out hallelujah. Lord, thank you goodness for saving me. Lord, he said, but when you think of the goodness of Jesus, when you think in terms of the things that the Lord has done for you in the past, you, you feel comforted because you know the Lord did it then. All I have to do is be patient and wait for the Lord to move now in my behalf. But sometimes the adversary, he throws little stones in your way, put obstacles in your path. So try to trip you, keep you, to, to, to cause you to fall into a deep, into a dark pit where the seemingly there is no hope for you but our hope lies in Christ Jesus. The psalmist said remember the word unto thy servant. He said upon which thou has caused me to hope. There is hope in Jesus. Lord I need you to move in my behalf in spite of the things I am going through Lord I still love you Lord you're still the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. Lord I thank you for taking me out of darkness and adding me to your perfect and to your marvelous light. Lord there is hope in you now Lord because I am saved now Lord because I am baptized in the name of Jesus now Lord because I am filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost I have comfort I have peace I have power and it lies in you it lies in your word the comfort we need it's in Jesus he said horror has taken hold upon me because of the wicked the wicked has forsaken thy law causing you problems. Everybody that laughs and talks to you, everybody that smiles in your face, everybody that you seemingly means you well, have your, 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 your well-being at heart. It's not your friend. There are those that do and say things to you and about you. There are those that will wreak that the world has a way of ganging up on you. If they don't like you, and they don't like each other. They have a way of forming an alliance so they can gang up on you solely because you are saved, solely because you are the light that's in darkness. And they'll gang up on you to wreak havoc upon you. 
He said, the wicked have forsaken thy law. But those of us that walk in the plain path, in the proven path of righteousness, those of us that look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, we understand that there are where our hope lies. We understand where our trust lies. We trust in the God of our salvation. The psalmist said, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. And all we have to do is just trust the God. With all our whole heart, we have to trust him. Jeremiah said, the way of man is not in himself. It's in the word of God. It's in Jesus. The Bible said that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The psalmist is saying here that I remember thy name, O Lord, in the night, and I have kept thy law. He said, I remember thy name in the night, O Lord, and I have kept thy law. He said, before I was afflicted, he said, I went astray, but now I have kept thy precepts. He said, it's good that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. A lot of times, if, if things didn't happen, if a lot of times we weren't faced with difficulties in life, we would be slacked in our worship concerning God. Everything would seem like it's going along smooth and life is hunky-dory. Everything would be uh, ice cream and, and apple pie and we wouldn't be, have a want for anything because the cares and concerns of this world would be taken care of. So we wouldn't seek God as earnest as we would if we were going through something. A lot of time God permits things to happen in our life so when we get down on our knees we can get closer and closer and closer to the God of our salvation. But all the time it would seem like all the time we're on top of the mountain there's never a struggle. It always seemed that life and the cares of life are always with us, that we always have an abundance of stuff and abundance of things, and the concerns of this world don't seem to matter to us. It's because we, if we didn't have these obstacles or oppositions up against us sometimes, we would not be seeking God. So God allows us to go through some things, but it's only to help us, to strengthen us, to bring us to a level of service that we, we might be fully used according to the master's plan. The Bible said that God declared the end from the beginning, and he knows where we are. He knows what we are doing in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of our complaints, in the midst of our cares and concerns. In this life, we still got comfort and our hope still lies in Jesus, in these laws, in the statutes and ordinances that he has set back, in the precedences that he has made in our life. God has this whole thing figured out. The plan came to fruition on Calvary. And he led captivity captives and gave gifts unto men. And one of the gifts was the comfort, the, the presence, the spirit, the power of God. He told the disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry or to wait. And they would be endued with power. That is the same power that fell on the 120 in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost, the spirit, the presence, the power of God, the comforter. And here the, com the, 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 the psalmist is saying that he found Comfort. Uh, the word, uh, the word had in, in his affliction had provided comfort for him while he was being afflicted. He said, I'll pray the Father. The book of John, he said, and he'll send a comforter in my name. He said, he'll lead you and guide you in all righteousness and in all truth. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. He said, when we, we're in our affliction, he said, oh Lord, I know thy judgments are right and thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. He said, lest I pray thee mercy and kindness be for my comfort according to the word unto thy servant. He said, pray, let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. He said, the word of God is our comfort. In the midst night hours, all we have to do, even while we're going through things, it could be wayward children, children of disobedience, with the adversary of bombarding children. Believe me, there are no boundaries with the devil. The devil is not afraid of you. He is not afraid of us. He is not afraid of the children of God. But it is the presence and the power of God in our life that backs the adversaries up. It is the presence of God in our life. It is the light of the Lord that shines upon on us that backs the devil up and when he sees that you're walking and basking in holiness for the Bible says holiness without which no man shall see God it, it, he sees that we're 
working and striving toward holiness, he has to back up. He has to move. He has to move. God did not save you, delivered you from sin and corruption and, and corruption in this world to allow the adversary to continue to bombard you without providing comfort for you, without providing hope for you, without providing a way out for you. And the reason God does these things so when he delivers you, when he brings you out of these situations, there's no doubt in your heart, there's no doubt in your mind that it was the presence and the power of God in your life that brought you through these situations. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. When you're going through struggles, I will bless the Lord. When things are not right, I will bless the Lord. When you're children are acting crazy, when your children are, are, are full of drugs and alcohol and doing things contrary to the will of God, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That's where your hope lies. That's where your comfort lies. It lies in the presence, in the power, in the spirit of God that dwells in you. You want peace? No, Jesus. You want comfort? No, Jesus. He said, it was good that I have been afflicted, that I might learn that statue. When you're going through something and you're seeking God with your whole heart because you know it's going to take him, the presence and the power of God, the word of God to deliver you from your situation. We try to do things that we, we know will help us to get closer and closer and closer and closer to God. We do things. We get up in the middle of the night and we get down on our knees and we petition God to help us to overcome. And sometimes God doesn't want us to overcome. He wants to endure it because he knows that when he brings us out in the process, we'll be delivered and he'll be glorified. And he'll be glorified. God is helping us, unbeknownst to you, that he's helping us to raise up a testimony in spite of the things that we're going through. One of the greatest weapons that the adversary uses is the word of God. And he uses it, he perverts the word. And he uses the word of God against us. Have you thinking it's right to do things? And said, God, is it okay with the Lord? Did not he tell Eve that in the garden? Did he not tell her that she would be like God? Knowing right from wrong, good from evil? Obedience is the key to salvation. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Obedience is the key. Keep his word. Keep the commandments. Keep his statutes. He said, this is my comfort in my affliction for thy word have quickened me. Sometimes when you talk about the goodness of the Lord, you forget about the situation. You forget about the problem. You forget about children. You forget about finances. You forget about being laid off. You're just glad that you're now in the presence of God. And nothing else matters. Lord, it's just me and you. It's not my problems. It's not my situation. Lord, it's just you. And I just give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thy word, O oh Lord, is already settled in heaven. Thy word, O oh Lord, is hid down in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thou art my portion, O oh Lord. I have said that I would keep Thy word, thy word, Lord, it is the word of God that we find comfort. In the middle of the night, we can lay in bed and say, Lord, just, just bless me. I will look to the hills for when cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. We can just bask on the word of God and we can find that peace. We can find that comfort. We can find the help that we need. The, the help that men in the world, are, uh, that it's eluding men in the world because they don't know Jesus. But those of us that know Jesus have to beware of the wiles of the devil. He'll use the word. He'll pervert the word. He'll distort the truth. Try to have you believe in a lie. The Lord said in the last days, he'll send a, 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 a strong delusion. He said, you, you, you'll believe a lie. And certainly that is one of the greatest vehicles that, that the adversary has. The ability to distort the precepts and the truth of the gospel. But the truth of the gospel will always stand for those of us that trust God. Those of us that believe that our hope is in Christ Jesus. That our hope is in the word of God. And for those of you today 
that are viewing this telecast, if comfort, if peace, if joy and happiness have eluded you, your hope can be in Christ Jesus today. All you have to do is repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This thing is for everybody. The Bible said that he suffers no man to be lost. All souls are precious in the eyes of the Lord. God wants to save you. He said, this is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. If you have gone astray, God can restore you. He can renew you. He can bring you back into fellowship with him. He said, God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. So today, dear children of God, those of you that know the Lord, my prayer for you today is that you continue to seek the Lord in his word. Continue to pray. Continue to keep God in your heart. And those of you who are still in darkness that are needing the light of the Lord's salvation in your life, there is comfort waiting for you in the kingdom of God. God bless you today. If you're in the city of Cincinnati, please visit us. I'm here with our dynamic pastor, Bishop Paul Alexander Biles, a preaching machine at 1150 West Galbraith Road in the city of Cincinnati, Ohio. Our morning worship on Sunday is at 1145. We have an evening worship that starts promptly at 6 o'clock. Monday night, 7 o'clock p.m., we have brotherhood and sisterhood prayer. On Wednesday night, we have adult, youth, and, and young adult Bible class. Please come out and join us. May God bless you, and may God continue to keep you in Jesus' name.